using scrunchies for the next pattern in Material Girls, and I want to show you my trim fabric combinations because I think I've got some cute stuff here. So, first of all, this orange, and then it's going to have red binding on the edges, and pink, and I think I'm going to make multiple of these, and one of the edges will be this pink lace. So that'll be like what the edge looks like, very cute. And then this silver as well, get a little sparkle going on the edge like that. And of course some gingham and I have two things I'm gonna try out. So I have this white trim that is pretty short and like will definitely work, but I also love when these scrunchies are just so beyond fluffy. So I have a super thick white trim as well. And I wouldn't do it like this thick, but maybe like that. We're gonna do a video and we'll see what I come up with. I got these materials from a combination of McCulloch and Wallace and Peter Jones in London. And when I went to get them, I posted a video on TikTok being like, where are we getting fabric? Because honestly, like the selection at either of those places was not exactly what I was looking for. Um, and a bunch of people and fabric stores found the TikTok and like commented saying where they are. So go look in the comment section if you're looking for London Rex. But the one that kept coming up over and over is Goldhawk Road, which apparently is an area that has a bunch of fabric stores on one street. So I will be checking that out next. I'm excited about what I got, but um, I think the fun of this pattern is like mixing and matching lots of different fun stuff. So once I know more fabric stores and I'm like, yeah, just able to get more fabric. I'm interested in what scraps I end up with and like other versions of this I might make, but I think these ones will be cute. But that's all to say, Gold Hawk Road. Have not personally been there, but apparently it's where the girlies are headed. But that's all to say, if you have even like other recommendations, I am very much looking for them because one of my goals in the next couple months is to just like scout it all out, go to all the places um, and kind of have my mainstays picked out. <laughs> scrunchies have awoken something in me like I, I don't know how i'm gonna go out without one now let me show you the ones that i've made so i have this white one which is actually i think i showed you in the past clip that trim that was just really wide instead of doing a piece of fabric and a piece of trim i used just the trim and folded it over itself and made this probably my favorite one just like a classic the orange with the bound edges is layered so you can kind of pull it apart and um lay it like that which is super cute so basically the pattern is going to have two different options in it one is going to be for something like this that's like very fluffy and then creates lots of like squeals because there's so much fabric bunched up and then this one has less length of fabric on it um to create more of just like a wonky circle shape instead of a super riveted one that being said i think it'll be fun to kind of mix and match instructions from the two of them like doing a layered one like this with the length of something like this would be like a huge scrunchie you know so that might be in my future and hopefully like you guys will try that out too the classic version of the scrunchie pattern that's going to be put out so it's pink fabric with pink lace and then it bunches up a ton all around this is the first one that i made and this one actually might be my favorite i love the way that this bunched up because the lace has a very thick uh, border on it so it can't totally scrunch up it's like um it's not as it's not as flexible it like can't scrunch up as much uh so just the way that this creates such a like mountain of fabric i think is adorable so and lastly this is the same lace but i did the layered version instead so that's what this looks like it'll be all puffed up an even bigger version of this very very excited about my scrunchies i'm excited to keep making more of these now that i have it down i kind of see how it's gonna be done. I really wanna go back to all those fabric stores I was talking about and find some cool trims and some cool fabrics and just pump these out because as I said, I think this is gonna become a little closet staple. I'm about to head into the studio to keep doing layout stuff for Material Girls, which is honestly most of what I do, just like sitting on my computer and dragging stuff around in design until it looks cute and we're kind of in the end stages. I'm gonna send it to print in the next couple of days, so. Wish me luck because it's kind of the like nitpicky end bit here, but I'm excited with how it's coming together. I think there's a lot of cute stuff in there and I took pictures of all the patterns yesterday and seeing those laid out, I think just really 
helps me start to see the vibe of the magazine and feel like I'm ready to push through to the end. Tonight I'm going to an art exhibit with some friends, the cute exhibition at Somerset House, which I don't know a ton about, but I know there's like a Hello Kitty cafe associated with it. Um, and it sounds up my alley, like lots of pink cute stuff. So I'll insert some clips into here of that. weeks I've been reading Where Next by Claire Press which is all about the future of fashion. In every chapter she interviews different designers and brands about what they think the future of fashion is going to look like. And it's a bunch of cool people who are doing things like harvesting biological ingredients to turn into materials or color, people who are closing circular economies or planning sustainable fashion weeks. There are a lot of cool things happening out there so it's a very hopeful book that covers a breadth of topics. Each chapter has a different theme. It'll be like the future of fashion is digital, the future of fashion is local, the future of fashion is shared, um, and it'll go into different aspects of what that might look like. So the shared one was like, here's some cool ways that people are renting out their clothes. The local one was my favorite because they referenced some knitters in Australia who are trying to take the entire material production process and like creation of a sweater process into their own hands. They have their own sheep, they get their wool from the sheep, they dye it themselves, they knit the sweaters. So they're really involved in every part of the production process, which is obviously not accessible or like expected of all of us, but they had a really interesting statistic in there about Australia. Do not quote me exactly, but the gist of it was that in the year 1960, 97% of all clothing in Australia was made in Australia, 3% was from other parts of the world, and now this is written in like 2020, 2021, 3% is made in Australia and 97% is made in other parts of the world and imported. Just in the past like 60 years that I thought was such a stark statistic about the level of further industrialization and commercialization that we're experiencing. And that's a huge stressor on the climate as well is just transporting all these things around. It's not just about the water footprint of making the slab of cotton that you're using. It's about like how enormously bigger the carbon footprint gets when we need to have something made in China and then get it to the US in two days. Like I don't talk about sustainability that often is because it gets mean. It gets mean online, especially, I hate to say it, in the fiber arts community about sustainability, which is too bad because I really feel like fiber artists could be a community that really compassionately finds ways to talk about this with the broader world, about slow fashion, about fashion consumerism. And more often than not, I see it becoming just like people shaming individual consumer choices and telling people that they're making a bad decision. And I don't think that's kind. I don't think that's a healthy way to go about getting people to care about sustainability. And that's something that the author talks about in the first chapter is we can talk about, you know, we have all these things available to have robots in factories and blah, blah, blah. But all of that doesn't really matter unless people care enough about this and want to invest in these solutions. We have to talk kindly with one another in order to build community coalition and, and actually build any sort of climate movement. And I unfortunately don't see that super often in the fiber arts community. I see people pointing fingers and playing the holier than thou game. It was making me quite sad and like upset reading this book, thinking about the lack of education that we have around sustainability. And that's absolutely by design, you know, like governments around the world don't want people to be educated about the science behind climate change because then they would have to regulate corporations and, and take a salary cut. Someone who runs in circles that are very aware of sustainability, it's important to remember that that's not the case for most people. That's a very insulated community, especially in the Western world. We're so used to the convenience of being able to get whatever we want whenever we want it. And most people make those decisions without thinking twice about them. And again, I don't think it's helpful to necessarily shame individual consumer choices, but it is absolutely an individual consumer's responsibility to think critically about the decisions that they're making. And I think that's something we can do with ourselves and try to foster conversations with people around us about. As someone who's creating new clothes very often, um, I want to think about ways to do that that really highlight creativity and fun and expression while also being aware of footprint and the future life of that garment etc etc it keeps coming back to the fact that we're just gonna have to consume less like we are gonna have to question our relationship to consumption we're gonna need to make less and that's whether you're buying more expensive sustainable clothing or fast fashion like you just need to bring less stuff into the world and when we do so we need to not just think about did it get to me in a sustainable way 
but is it going to leave me in a sustainable way too? Am I going to be able to use this piece for a long time? Or is it going to fall apart in a few days and have to go to the trash? Or am I going to be able to sell it? Could I rent it out to someone else? Like there's, there's further life and further sustainability to think about after a garment has been created and gotten to us as well. Another really important chapter in the book was about globalization. Most of the clothing in the West that is donated just ends up being dumped in specifically Asia and Africa. It began as charity where western organizations would say well great we have all these extra clothes we're going to send them to places that need them they can be you know sold on that market and improve the economy blah 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 but it's basically become a dumping ground now we're sending way more than is usable sending things that other people shouldn't have to wear again that are stained and tattered and there's so much racism and entitlement and thinking we should be able to consume however we want and then just like send it off to be someone else's problem we don't have to see it but i guess that's me rambling on about Lots of different things that I noticed in this book but obviously it's gotten me thinking about lots of different conversations um, and things that I want to be more aware of going forward and at least like making my own conscious decisions about where I can. We all have so much to learn about this. I was learning about innovations that I had no idea about, about specific you know brands and designers that I want to support that I had no idea were doing this work because it's not stuff that's often platformed because it's not immediately profitable. It's a constantly changing space and we need to be having empathetic conversations in order to encourage each other to do better. Girl Girls Club Day. It's February 10th, so since Valentine's Day is coming up, today is going to be a V-Day themed club, which is so exciting. It's my favorite holiday. I think it's like, I mean, it's just a very material girl aesthetic, isn't it? Everyone's going to bring their projects, and we're making little Valentine's goodie bags, like little bags people can decorate with glitter and stickers and markers and stuff, plus um, little Valentine's Day zines. Here, I'll show you one. So I designed this a few years ago um, and it's just one page scene that you can fold up and it says six reasons I love you and then you write the reasons in and it's like a coloring book. So I'm gonna put these out and people can color them. Um, there's a free download of this on my website if you wanna download them. I think it's like a super cute, unique way to give out Valentine's. Let me show you my outfit of the day. I'm very excited to be wearing this sweater. This is the No Body Sweater by Josephine Diring, which I finished a while ago and I think I mentioned was hoping to wear some parachute pants with ordered some the vintage order got cancelled found another pair that i think is even better vintage order did not get cancelled here they are these are hoka hoparas i get asked about these shoes a lot they're like super comfortable and tactical practical and pink and then this little scrunchie i made out of a big piece of lace i believe by the time you see this it will be out as a free pattern in material girls <laughs> to show you I finished a full panel finished a full panel on my knitting knitting kiki heart sweater uh this is going really well I think in the last video I was saying how proud I was of myself for figuring out the brioche stitch and look at me now rows and rows and rows of brioche stitch uh, I like this color work too because it's simple enough that it's kind of just a fun little extra thing to do every few rows but it's not so much that you're getting things tangled and it's like hard and confusing so Big fan, this is the front part of that. And then I've just started the bottom parts of the ribbing and a few rows of brioche going on that. It's going quite slowly, mostly because I haven't picked it up in like a week. Um, I'm in the home stretches of Material Girl stuff, so I'm just spending all my extra time dragging around things to like lay out the magazine that I want to, which is certainly fun, but I do miss just like sitting and relaxing with the project. And this one, has actually become quite relaxing. I get what people are saying about brioche being relaxing. So I'm joining the club, you guys. Okay, and this is like barely an update because you cannot tell what this is at all, but I started the Prima Pullover by Star Cross Knits and this red is not a part of it. That's from doing the provisional cast on, another new skill. I've never had a pattern that like called for it. I feel like it's pretty rare, but it's pretty nice. It's like use your crochet hook over the knitting needle quite relaxing, big fan, I really like doing it. You eventually pull out this cast on and then it'll have live stitches instead of a cast on edge that you can pick up to keep knitting. So since this is an off the shoulder top, it's my understanding that what will happen later is I'll make the body in the sleeves and then I'll come back, 
take this off, put the live stitch on my needles, and start knitting a flap that goes over um, the bust. So obviously far away from doing that, I've just done the cast on in like two or three rows, so it'll be a while, but so far quite fun. And I'm loving the yarn, which is Barocco Vintage, very soft, very nice to work with. Oh, and also new needles. These are Knit Pro needles, um, not sponsored. I've just no, I've never used them before, but they were what was available when I needed this new size of needles for this pattern when I went to Peter Jones. And honestly, I really like them. They're nice and smooth, like a little smoother than the other bamboo ones that I have. I don't know if they have some sort of like coating on them or what. And cute little colors. So trying lots of new things. I think that's all I've got for project stuff. I've been finishing up, like you saw the scrunchies. There are also going to be knitting and crochet patterns in Material Girls. Hopefully I start having a little more time after this release to just hang out and knit because I'm excited about all these projects. Tonight we're celebrating one year of Material Girls and we're having a little event at a wine bar, which I think will be super cute. This is the first time we've done this, so I'm really excited and a little nervous, um, but let me show you my outfit. So this scrunchie is a pattern in the latest issue of the magazine, which is going to be released for the first time tonight. Um, and this is an upper studio dress, which I got myself as a little birthday present. And then I'm wearing it with white tights and cute little heels, which I think are Ripetto knockoffs, but I got the Steve Madden version. Ago and I'm honestly still geeked. It was making me feel kind of like sappy and reflective about just the past year of Material Girls and how like how special it's been. I think especially as someone who's like not from the UK, it was really hard for me to build a community when you came here. I mean, that's the case when you move to any new city, but this was like my first experience with that. Yeah, just like looking around the tables and seeing so many like lovely, kind people that I didn't know a year ago and now that I get to connect with through creativity and just like supporting each other and sharing our skills and being interested in fiber art. Like it's such a niche, amazing little community. So I was feeling very proud and just happy and yeah, reflecting on like, you know, a year ago, I was trying to put out the first issue of Material Girls and I didn't know where I could print it. And I was like crying to grace and thinking like, are people even gonna get this? Are they gonna like it? Like, is this something I can actually bring to fruition? And, and it is like, I, I just put out the seventh issue and got to have a wine bar event in central London to celebrate it with so many lovely, talented people. So um, life is good. Feeling very thankful for that. Thankful for the Material Girls community. Very excited for what's to come next. I was brewing up some ideas for further fun events. Stay tuned for that. But I wanted to show you the Material Girls issue because this is out now. And I'll give you a little tour inside scrunchy pattern, obviously. The Material Girl, this issue is Sailor's Textiles, which I've been obsessed with for a long time. I mean, look at all this cool color work and text work and stuff like that. So great little interview there. Bow Project recommendations. Uh, there's a bunch of um, free patterns from Material Girls because I've been putting out the bow patterns, you guys. We did this at Material Girls Club, made like little fortune tellers with glitter on them and stuff. So I put a tutorial of that in there. Fingerless gloves pattern, a few other um, fun pages in there, but there's a free download on materialgirls.com. So go check it out. And also you're watching this on my personal YouTube channel, but I started the Material Girls YouTube channel to make video tutorials for all the patterns. Um, hopefully I can do that for all the ones that come out from here on out, because I know that's helpful to see things like actually build up and I want to make the patterns as accessible and beginner friendly as possible. I know that like seeing someone do it is often really helpful with that. I know it has been for me. So the three patterns in this are out as video tutorials now and more to come there. So check out at Material Girls on YouTube um, for even more fiber art content from yours truly. I think that's all for this video. It's been a big month of events and getting the issue ready and launching it. And it's been really exciting. Like, so excited for what's to come next. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you want to see more of what I'm working on and I'll see you later.